Okay, so uh, if you remember from last time, we were talking about the approximate nearest neighbor search problem, and we're working with uh, Jorge, myself, Miles, Rosmond, um, Omar, who will be giving the talk, the second half of the talk, Haley, and Kadist, uh, under the direction of Sanjeev. And okay, so the outline. We're going to be talking about the new work that we've done this week since last time, mostly. Um, hopefully you're all a little familiar with this problem by now. So here's, a, here's the nearest neighbor graph of some faces of people from our group. Um, so I mean here there's only seven data points, so you can just do brute force on this. But uh, it's with two nearest neighbors. And the darker lines indicate where it goes both ways. Or, you know, so I'm very lonely over here. I have some nearest neighbors, but, but nobody likes me. So that's, uh, but anyway, uh, you can see something interesting in this graph in that, uh, you know, there are some places that are more outliers. And that the fact that the nearest neighbors, you know, it's not symmetric. It doesn't commute. But, uh, so anyway, uh, the goal is to find the nearest neighbors of all n points in your data set in order n time. So n squared is too long for huge data sets. So we want to um, speed it up by reducing the dependence on n. OK? So, and we want to take an object in a data set and find similar points. Um, we want to construct these nearest neighbor graphs for all of our cool machine learning algorithms. Um, so existing methods, we have the pairwise search, which is not very interesting. Um, then there's trees, which are very cool, but they work in only lower dimensions. So we tried running these on our data set of 100,000 data points, and it crashes because it doesn't have enough memory to store the tree structure. Um, then there's locality sensitive hashing, in which we take our points and convert them into bit codes. Um, OK, so where we left off last time is that we're interested in using the distribution of our data. Suppose that I know my distribution of the data is a mixture of Gaussians. OK, in many real world applications, this is a very reasonable assumption to have your data or lie in a bunch of clusters, and there's a bunch of noisy fluctuations about those clusters. OK? So what we want to do is find these clusters. We want to partition the data based on where we believe the data point to be coming from. OK? So um, this week, uh, we proved a theorem about clustering. Um, this is a simplified form so that I can fit it on one slide. But uh, it says that given n samples from a mixture of Gaussians with a separation constant rho, uh, this separation constant basically tells me how many standard deviations away I have to go before I encounter another Gaussian. OK, so um, now I'm given a query Q, and I want to ask the probability that uh, query Q is uh, sampled from my Gaussian, my mixture of Gaussians, by the way. I want to ask the probability that my query and the k nearest neighbors of my query share the same cluster with q, or at least one cluster. Maybe I assign them to more than one cluster. Uh, as you'll see later, we do that. Um, and so that probability is lower bounded. By uh, this, I just have an error function. In, uh, it's like in d dimensions. but um, so, And uh, it just depends on the separation constant minus uh, this factor, which depends on the number of nearest neighbors you're asking for and the number of points you have, right? If, the, if k, the number of points I want to be in my same cluster, is of order n, clearly I'm, I may not do very well. But if k is small, then there's a high probability that I'm going to share the same cluster. And this depends on how well separated my Gaussians are. Um, so anyway, I'm going to bring us back to locality-sensitive hashing real quick. So 
remember that I'm taking each point and I'm storing it as a bit code. So I'm gonna, for example, with linear hashing, I'm just gonna be splicing my data with these hyperplanes and I'm gonna be putting these guys into bins and my formula I'm gonna use is h of x is sine of some random vector uh, dot product with x. Um, and there are nonlinear hashing methods too, which uh, work to varying degrees of success. But, um, and then there are a variety of methods to use to search for the nearest neighbors. So we've been experimenting with some of those methods. Um, OK, so something which I didn't talk about last time is what are the guarantees that I have if I use LSH? OK, um, so in the literature, it often says that Locality sensitive hashing solves the 1 plus epsilon comma r nearest neighbor problem. So this means that with high probability, if there is a point within r of my query, then I will find a point within 1 plus epsilon r of my query. So it says that if there are points close to my query, then I'm going to find one which is a, a little farther away. OK? Now, the runtime to get a high precision of accuracy, which is um, uh, some function of the parameters, I'm going to uh, need order d times n to the 1 plus delta log n, where delta depends on epsilon and r, the epsilon and r I'm choosing. So the more accurate I'm asking my, uh, my algorithm to be, the longer the runtime is going to be. So if 1 plus epsilon is going to 1, then this delta is like 1, and I'm reduced to the n squared search. OK, but if I don't ask for that much accuracy, then I'm going to be working faster in n. And we'll talk more about this uh, later. But uh, for now, I'm going to hand the floor over to Omar so that he can tell us about our uh, new algorithm, newest algorithm. So. Before I do anything, I'm going to. Thank you. Yes. Uh, is it working? Yeah. OK, so I will talk more about LSH to you now. Uh, so last time, we started explaining what LSH does. So let's say we have n data points living in high dimensionality. And it's expensive to store it. What I do? is I'm going to create a binary code for those points. Now, uh, since the data is large, I can cluster it. So find uh, regions uh, with high probability of finding points. Find those clusters. And now for every point, I'm going to assign the two nearest clusters to that point. So those points highlighted in pink correspond to cluster number one and cluster number two. They are the closers. And I keep doing that. So for cluster number two, I find the points that are closest to the other clusters. So there are points from cluster number three that are close to cluster number two, and points from cluster number one that are close to cluster number two. So I pick two clusters. And I keep doing that for every cluster. Now, I restrict myself to that new set of points. And I center my data. I do my hyperplane uh, hashing. And that way, I can create a binary code. So if I'm above, I'm 0. If I'm below, I'm 1. And for every cluster, I create a code like that. Now, if I'm 0, 1, I look 
at my table and I see for which code in my table wh what code has 0, 1 inside my table. And I pick that number to be approximately my nearest neighbor. And I keep doing that for every cluster. I do a hashing for every cluster. So the difference between this algorithm and the other one was that the other one was just centered at the origin. We were just picking hyperplanes at the origin. Now we are doing the hyperplane at the clusters, at the center of the clusters, and generating codes. I do it for every cluster. Now let's say I have a yellow point, which is my query. It lies inside a cluster. I do my hashing. I find the binary code for my query. And I look inside my table. If the binary code of my query is the same as one of the points inside my table, there's a high probability that they have their neighbors, they are close. That's how I define my algorithm. So this is my table here. Uh, so after gathering all those points, I do a brute force now. I take all those points that have the same binary code as my query. And then I calculate the distance into uh, the L2 distance, the original distance. And I take the smallest distance among those points. And those points are not that many if we do that algorithm. Now, to improve accuracy, we make T lookup tables. So we hash it many times. Uh, so we have interesting results using that algorithm. To measure accuracy, we can find what fraction of the top 10 nearest neighbors we found lie within the top 10, 50, 100 actual nearest neighbors. All right? So this will measure the accuracy of my code. Our new algorithm uses eight tables and 10 bits is the blue curve. As you can see, for example, for 50 actual uh, number of neighbors, we have 0 0.85. So it's a pretty good percentage. It's pretty accurate. For the lookup table uh, algorithm, uh, it does less and for the pairwise hamming distance, for 128 bits, even less. And the binary is not that good. We don't even reach 40%. Now, for the running time, that's when it becomes interesting here. We have high accuracy for our method and speed as well. It's because we restrict our data to our clusters. And as you can see, uh, the red one is just enormous, takes hours. Ah. The yellow one represents uh, just doing the blind comparison of two distance between two points, any two points, creating an n squared table. n is a number of points, so 100,000. It takes complexity n squared, it takes hours, as you can see. It actually took us more than one day to do that. And uh, our algorithm, the blue one, is, uh, is very quick. It goes. Now, to improve accuracy, we were thinking about increasing the number of clusters, so hashing more, and then uh, either increase the number of nearest clusters. Remember in our example, I just considered two nearest clusters. But now I can use S nearest clusters and do that algorithm. Uh, we can improve the number of tables as well. But the optimal would be to increase all those parameters at once and see uh, if we can fine tune it. 
as you can see, it improves as well. So for C equal 128, it's way more than C equal 1. Right. OK. Now for our complexity, hmm. we are looking for a linear complexity. So a search, nearest neighbor search, approximate. For n points, we want a complexity of O n. But unfortunately, we didn't have that, but we are close. We get n log n. So it's uh, order CDN to find the nearest clusters. Order DT uh, sum MJ NJ. MJ will represent the number of bits. It's typically log n because it's the number of bits. So and uh, log n times n. So basically, our search takes log n times n. Now, to solve the 1 plus epsilon r nn problem, we need to choose uh, tables of order n to the delta. While we're thinking about uh, doing some future work about that, now we can either find a faster algorithm using different methods. So we don't want to compare two points anymore because we don't think that will work. But what would happen if we can take uh, sets and compare sets itself? Uh, it's just an idea, and uh, we didn't formalize it yet. Or uh, maybe prove that uh, it's not possible to do it. We don't know yet. And uh, see if that can be achieved without the curse of dimensionality. All right, so uh, you can always read our report and uh, have fun. All right, thank you. So for here, we constructed our clusters uh, to do this simulation. But for our theoretical work, we suppose that the mixture of Gaussian is given. So you're given a distribution. Can you prove that the algorithm works with high probability? That's what our research shows. Yes. Uh, what those different parameters correspond to? Like this one? Points in the boxes. OK. Like what, what does that mean in the context of the algorithm? Can you go back to the, the picture with the points in the boxes? So here it is. Uh -huh. yeah. Q is a yellow point. It's my query. Mm -hmm. Now, the black points are my data set. Now I want to find the nearest neighbors. I want to find C nearest neighbor, uh, K nearest neighbors for my point. I have C clusters. So here C equal 4. S, we represent the number of close, uh, cl close cl clusters to my point. So in my example, I took two clusters. So I will say that a cluster is close to a point if the center is close. Okay, so you know the cluster, uh, you know, so you know what cluster the query point is in? Yeah, and I know it. You know its closest cluster? I can, I can look into my data and determine in which cluster it belongs to. So here I take two. And then if you vary the number, Obviously, it will be more accurate because we have more points. Right. You run a little bit slower, but it's linear, so it's all right. How do you do the initial clustering? Uh, for this one, we run uh, a MATLAB query. Uh -huh. uh, to do that, it's called k-means. We run it with uh, 10 iterations, and we stopped. It's, it's quite accurate. 
hash is a pre computation on every cluster you do a hashing. In every cluster I do a hashing. So I, I recentralize and I hash. I create a code that way. Uh, the theorem, okay. Is this one? Yeah. So, Sorry? Oh, you mean if k is n? K, k is the number of nearest neighbors right. I'm looking for. So you already have like n central components. So yes. k equals n, then you don't Yeah. Don't do anything. How, does it How does it appear inside my formula? Yeah. Uh, so if you plug in k equals n, then you get rho minus something which is order one and I mean there are some other constants in there that I left out but it would basically be a, a vacuous statement saying oh I have yeah. almost no probability of this happening and if I have just k equals to one then I mean I've got something or even k just being order one I've got something which is k over n and then I take it to the one over d so it kind of tells you the relationship between n and D and rho so that you know, um, you know, given my distribution, um, how, how far away do my Gaussians have to be if I want them to have k nearest neighbors still landing in? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So it's about you need to be some distance away from rho. You can't quite get up to rho because then that's where you're colliding with other Gaussians. So if you're just a little bit closer, then you're okay. So this is basically the integral of all the Gaussians up to, up to rho minus some small factor. So can you theoretically then, uh, so let, let's say I give you a mixture of Gaussians with a lot of components. Mm -hmm. That usually means low separation. Yeah. Uh, unless the Gaussians are really like close right. center. So is there kind of a, a trade-off where you could, you know, yeah, so parse, like merge the, the clusters down to increase separation with on average, you know? I mean, the you other can thing obviously not increase it everywhere. The other thing is the, um, the full statement of this theorem doesn't assume that there's a separation constant. Mm -hmm. Basically, you just ask for, you know, so you're, you're asking for a point to belong to S clusters. So as long as not more than like S of them are colliding, then mm -hmm. you're okay. So if a, a few of them are colliding, mm -hmm. but I'm choosing S large enough, mm -hmm. then I'm fine. So given your, your data and your cluster centers, it'll allow you to calculate mm -hmm. what you may want to choose for S mm -hmm. if you want to calculate the probability of your successful, mm -hmm. of your success here. Basically, you're saying technically you could optimize S yeah. and C and P yeah. for a specific distribution, right? Yeah. That's your original problem. That the one thing that you really know is that it's not changing, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. The formula wouldn't be that simple, but uh, you will have a bound as well. And you can calculate it in order and time, too. <coughs> yes? So, then. Selecting the hyperplanes randomly for the hashing. Why would I choose those hyperplanes to all go through the origin? They all go through the origin. Why would I do that? Why wouldn't I do sine of W transpose X plus X over B? Like in random transform and shift those planes randomly. What why would they all go through the same point? So um the real thing is that you want to maximize the efficiency of your bits. 
So you want like 50% of the bits, or 50% of the points to go to the left and 50% to go to the right. So if I choose, um, I project onto a hyperplane, or I, sorry, I project onto a line and then I choose where to cut on the line. So this is like choosing the mean every time. You could also choose the median in which exactly half would fall on either side. Or you could choose random, which also yeah. works, but you need more bits because sometimes you, you pick an edge and it doesn't really tell you a lot. If, if you are cutting through the center, half of the points will go to because the left or to the, the, the left. Right? Yeah. It's, it's so symmetric. It's scaled by the covariance. You, you said you pick randomly with the uniform, basically, covariance. We actually tried that. Yeah. And for some reason, and it, and it worked worse. Um, and the reason is because the... Um, Sorry, so the reason is because the, the nearest neighbors are ranked by L2 distance. Oh, not no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you choose uniform. It's actually full of matter for the piece of piece. The bit efficiency should have probably depend on this. Okay, the last thing for the All right. Um, the tradition is that the uh, mentor is invited to say a few words about uh, the week and uh, the performance of the students. First of all, I should apologize to be here at 9.15 <laughs> and uh, somehow uh